Hello everyone, welcome to or back to the new grid. I'm Kyle and in today's video I'm going to break down the Optimus robot that Tesla revealed at AI Day. Now I've got other videos planned on breaking down the full self-driving software from AI Day standpoint, but this is just focusing on Optimus robot and things that a lot of people may have missed that was presented there. So one of the first things that people I think understood was that this first robot that walked out onto stage was a prototype that they built in six months out of parts that were pretty much so off the shelf and easy to get a hold of. Now, they knew going forward that this was not the best solution, but they needed a platform to start building the mind around to start training this robot to do certain tasks. And, what, and the main thing is that we saw the bot walking and kind of dancing on stage but we didn't really know was that hand coded for the, it to do that or how it was really made for it to go out there. But looking in further into how this was done it was actually they talk about how the robot was learning how to walk. It started out really slow and then started getting faster and faster as it learned how to move around its environment and kind of modeled out how it could plan where to go. But the reality there's other forces interacting with this robot so it has to learn on how to maneuver different scenarios so that's why they made a big deal that this is the first time they've untethered it to walk and i think they wanted you to know that because one they didn't want to be wasting a lot of resources on this robot and two they don't want to break it because they are utilizing it to start training and learning new things and that's what they're starting to do with the newer prototype is training how to walk. So what Tesla most likely pre-programmed was to say hey walk here and dance at this spot and that's about all that Tesla said to do rather than do each motion of these steps to move forward. So a lot more went into how that robot was walking than what you would first take away from it. That was actually done via the hardware computer which the computer inside of the Tesla bot is a little bit different than the computer inside of the cars. It's very similar, but it had some added functionalities like Wi-Fi, audio, and some security features at a hardware level so that you basically can't train it to kill a person or something like that. Those are, those are the things that they've built into that chip. Now, I don't think that they've actually implemented any of that for this demo other than probably Wi-Fi to be able to actually say, hey, dance on stage in this location to, to be able to communicate it with it to upload its maneuvers and stuff that it needs to perform. So that's a little on how this company is working to design this robot and build it. They're starting with what they can get done quickly. So that was this quick thrown together robot, looked ugly and everything. Then, then they started building into analyzing what they needed. So then they built this next robot. Now I know they'll probably iterate over that and incorporate even more of what they find after building this robot because that's what Tesla does. They keep making iterations to their car lines. So they're going to keep making iterations to the bot, which is a very agile way. So basically it's not wasting a ton of resources, setting yourself in stone what you must do. You can do whatever's quickest, whatever they can get done soonest to start learning and then as they learn things they can change the requirements of the robot to make them better or more lenient in some respects so that it can't take over, so that constraints can't take over the project and you end up with something that hasn't been tested until the end and then it doesn't work. So this is a very agile method of making sure the, the base requirements are small and then they work in how to integrate the new stuff. And, and you actually kind of saw this in their hardware demo. They had a very good idea of JoJo. They presented it last year and they've since had to change that chipset because they realized there was an issue with it. So that's kind of how they didn't really focus, hey, we've got to have this working perfectly. This is what we think will work. But they found out in reality it didn't completely work, so they had to make a new iteration to that chipset. So my take on this is people really don't understand the complexities of what this bot 
is doing and how it's learning and how it's growing as a bot to be able to walk and move throughout its space. So that's something that people aren't going to realize. But they're also going down this line of, hey, let's make sure we can produce a lot of these quickly at scale. And that's something that the factory workers and stuff aren't going to realize how quickly they may lose their jobs. Now, I don't think Tesla's going to go all in on them right away, at least eliminating jobs, but at least start adding robots in positions that have went vacant. And maybe they'll start actually making people work a little less online as they phase them out. So maybe they'll go down to a six hour work week for them so that bots can start taking over it and hopefully they still compensate them the same that they were. So overall in three, five, ten years, this is going to have a huge effect on the economy where anything in manufacturing can basically just be done by these Tesla bots. Now, that doesn't eliminate all jobs because you still need the creative minds to design different things that we want to use and tra help train the bots on how to do those processes. So not all jobs are going to go away, but you really should focus on jobs that are going to be needed for this robot or needed in reality in general. So if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. I'm also doing full self-driving videos. I'm going to break down the full self-driving portion of this AI day in another video, probably include some clips from my drives that I've seen that they've done well or poorly on and how they're planning to address them based on what they said in that meeting. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.